Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Christmas movies are here. I'm Barry. This is Koi. You are watching Collider Movie Club. This episode of Collider Movie Club is a paid promotion brought to you by Movies Anywhere. Movies Anywhere is the app that brings together your favorite digital movies into one convenient place. And now a brand new feature called My Lists will let you organize and personalize your digital collection in two very cool new ways. First, you can let the Movies Anywhere app do the work for you. It uses a unique algorithm that creates auto-curated suggested lists based on your purchase and watching habits. And second, you can create lists all on your own or even tweak those auto-generated ones. Organize and categorize your movies however you'd like. Download the free Movies Anywhere app, sync your collections from different digital retailers into one place, and start organizing your movies your way today. I love this time of the year. Uh, there's just so many reasons. The food, the family, the, the feeling in the air. Even in L.A., you still feel it. But I think the thing that makes it the season for me is the movies. Because even when you watch a holiday movie outside of the season, you get a little, little taste, a little whiff. I think, uh, I think I'm right there with you. You know how I feel about Halloween. But I, sure. do, I do love this time of year as well. And one of the must-watches at this point in the year I know you share because we oh, picked it together. come on. It, it's Home Alone. Do you hear me? I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs> I think we were both the perfect age yeah. for a movie like that where, like, I wanted to have the wet band and sneak into my house so I could be like Kevin McAllister and create traps. It's just a generation after, of mercenaries were born see, when Home Alone came out. Maybe, we all began to maybe. think of all of the most murderous. I did this for years. <laughs> like every photo. Like a lot of kids have little hand symbols. I was the kid that did the Home Alone face <laughs> forever. I Yeah, I could picture it. I, was that I mean, kid. you could still do it if I you mean, want. I mean, I just did a couple times. <laughs> I'm not doing it. But <laughs> I feel like that movie brought me this close to wanting a tarantula. Yeah. There were so and still, still to this this day, like I want my very own cheese pizza. <laughs> it holds up so well. It really does. I, I love that the the Talkman is like our modern day phone Talk memo. Boy. Talk boy. And I could totally see that's that being a trap. And that's that, the second one. Yeah. Oh, is it? That's okay. The second so one. the talk boy to me was such a such a thing. I think thing. I still have a talk boy buried in a closet back east. Somewhere. That was my like every year for Christmas <laughs> wanted list. And it's such a Christmas movie because you think about like wish fulfillment, you think about the things you want to be when you grow up, you think about like wh when you're as an adult looking back at the parents' negligence versus his like adultness. When you watch the movie and you look at like what that guy's job must have been because he lives in a palace. Like there's so much that changes as you're an adult, but the fun and the spirit and the Christmas of it is timeless. Yeah, it is. And that that's one of the uh one of the best qualities of the movie is that it's, you know, it's an adventure story for a kid who was left alone, but literally everything about the movie is just oozing with Christmas spirit. Yeah. I think I think it's one thing we're going to get to this later. I think it's one thing to just set a movie during Christmas time. Like I could think of a couple of movies that some out there might call Christmas movies simply because I'm not I'm not getting at what you think I am. I'm gonna come back to that point. But there are movies out there that are simply set at the end of December. Sure. So someone could say, Yeah, that's a Christmas movie. If you don't tap into the holiday spirit whatsoever, you are not a Christmas movie. I agree. The, but this is just like bubbling over with, with Christmas spirit and tapping into like the pinnacles of the holiday and literally everything Kevin does yeah. has a foot in that world. So it makes it a delightful, suspenseful adventure for this kid while also feeling like one big, enormous celebration of the holiday. I also feel like it is, while being a piece of its time, timeless. And that, I mentioned briefly a second ago, but when I watch it, it doesn't feel like this is set in the 90s. It feels like because of three liter sodas and certain things, like very 90s, because I definitely, grew, I was raised that way. We were a big movie, pizza, every Friday night, three liters of soda family. But other than some labels and stuff, this movie still feels like today it could do well in theaters because of the sense of adventure, because of the mischievousness, because oh. like to me, this feels like a movie that could always be. There's a reason why this franchise has kept going. Yeah. So it's I mean, it is it's a very it's a very universally appealing concept. And it's it's also a concept that can be reshaped and remolded to suit 
you know, a, a different year. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe even a different holiday. And Mac there, is, They've never done that before. No. None, I, of, I none of them have ever done but that. But maybe. Maybe one day. But Mac feels so in the right here. I love how uh, Culkin has so much going on that feels nefarious. Like, he's almost a Dennis the Menace, but you're so on his side because the Wet Bandits are, are so, like, evil but almost cartoonish. Like, this movie walks the line between live-action cartoon and reality very, very well. Well, as a kid, that's a fun part because it gives you that feeling that if you were in Kevin's position, you, could you, do all you would things. stand a chance against yeah. them. You could actually help yourself. It's got Wile e. Coyote physics, and I love that because you're in a Looney Tune, but you're in real life as well. One of my greatest recent purchases. This is such a backwards gift. <laughs> I got it through my parents. Uh, Mondo released a Home Alone post and it's it's the house and there's something Aww. in all of the windows and it's just absolutely beautiful and I wanted it so I got it for them to hang in their house. So when you go home you have your poster? <laughs> I'll, I'll, do, I'll do like a museum thing where you'll just catch me just like standing in front of this piece of art just That's staring art at it i love that I, I love it i think it's beautiful and when good art and good posters do that it brings all the feelings of the movie back yeah and this movie's Ex got so many iconic exactly. images you can perceive a lot of the movie here just looking at the poster well we were we were talking about the 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 pizza the tarantula another thing that i think you about filthy animals well another thing i think about all the time that isn't necessarily christmas related is when he goes to the store and he wants a toothbrush approved by the american dental association yes. because you know my stuff with the dentist so I feel like that just kind of fueled it. Where even still to this day, if I buy a toothbrush, I look for the ADA seal is that, okay. on it. Kevin McAllister says it's good. It's good enough yeah, for so me. Yeah, so I have to get that. Of course, naturally. <laughs> Herb. Yeah? I've got a question here about a toothbrush. I think of the snow. I think of New York. I think of uh, that whole vibe to me is Christmas. I'm still thinking it. Because I watched them back to back. That's okay. what's happening right now. All right, that's I had fair to, enough. Because they're, they're such I a great double feature. I love feature. too, also. Because they oh, the whole plane thing. That's right. But I think of those images as being what my childhood was to the point where I, like, misremember my childhood. Like, I watched this so much as a kid. There are times that, like, some of those images feel like my Christmas that worked. I understand that. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like a dream state. Well, it's also like, I'm, like, just feeding you right now. It's almost like when you were too young to remember something, but you've convinced yourself you can remember it because it, you know a photo of that moment exactly. so well. You remember the context and, around and it. And you can't help but to fill in the blanks. Yeah. That they are blanks that you actually like don't have in your head. So like you're filling it in with these movies are literally childhood. <laughs> to the definition all the way childhood. Uh, now your pick yes. is less childhood. Just by definition. Yeah, <laughs> my my movie is not for the not for the kiddos. Um, although I think that yeah, again, like I am a I am a terrible judge of what is age appropriate for for children to watch. So do not take this as as a recommendation for the younger moviegoers out there. But I think as a kid, I would probably really enjoy this movie because it's Krampus. By the way, I'm talking about Krampus. Honey, I just got my ass kicked. Buy a bunch of Christmas cookies, so trust me when I say I can take it. There, there is. There's a young set of characters in this movie, and and I would say the lead the lead actor in it, the uh, the central character, does have almost like I mean, not really like Kevin McAllister like scheming vibes, but he is. He's your hero. He's your entryway, and he does give you that feeling that if Krampus came down my chimney on Christmas. Would I be able to defend my family? And it's it's a it's an interesting scenario to play through. But basically, Krampus is is the opposite of Santa Claus. And the movie is about a young boy who loses his Christmas spirit, and in doing so, he conjures Krampus, and Krampus attacks his family, who are all stuck together in a house on Christmas. It is directed by Mike Dougherty, who did Trick or Treat. Yeah, you know how much I love Trick or Treat, and. I love how that movie functions as a really great, smartly told horror story, but it also feels like one big celebration of Halloween, and I think he achieves the same exact thing with Krampus. This movie did not get nearly enough love when it came out, but I think that it's... My my scare threshold isn't the same as everybody, so That's I don't fair. necessarily think it is the scariest movie in the world, but it's more of a like an exhilarating adventure that I like to keep having over and over. There are a couple of very, very creative set pieces where Christmassy things turn deadly, and I think it is just so clever and fun, and 
I personally like when my mind goes down that dark path a little on the holidays. That's true. That's true for you. I, I also love that things that are so iconically Christmas can be used in a way that isn't Christmas because you still get that feeling of Christmas. That's what makes these movies so special is when you see a Christmas tree, when you see an ornament, when you see a little train, when you see presents. Like, there's an inherent, like, warmth, even if it's horrifying. Yeah. Th I mean, this this has some of those qualities, but it obviously turns them on its, on its head. Another reason why I think this movie is very successful, and I think he, I think uh, he achieves this with Trick or Treat in some senses. Uh, may maybe not even, not even as strongly now that I'm saying it, but it's got such a heavy focus on on the value of a family and mm. being being there for family and trying to come to understand one another, even if you're completely different. Like some of the stuff the family members do in this movie is bad, bad, bad. I'm not condoning any of that, but it it is largely about. This family kind of being ripped apart over their differences and needing to band together again to take on Krampus and all of his other evil entities that he conjures. Is that not exactly what Christmas is about? Families getting it's, back together? It's extremely successful in that department, though. There's a couple of really powerful emotional beats in this movie, but I'm just going to, like, put this out there in the world. I don't think it's ever going to happen, but I really do think that Krampus... This one movie should have been the start of an anthology series. Just saying. Just saying. I'm going to pivot to yeah. this is one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. This is one of the movies that shaped me as well. I watched this every single Christmas growing up. When you hear the title, you're going to be like, wow, that's some parenting. And I stand by it made me a better person. Since the age of like two, I watched this every <laughs> single year. It is a movie that does not get enough credit for being a Christmas movie because a movie that came out the year later is the action Christmas movie. A much lesser film. Won't even say what it is. It's not worth my description. But the real action Christmas movie is Danny Glover and Mel Gibson's Lethal Weapon as written by Shane Black. Richard Donner made an action Christmas movie for the ages. The remarks like that will not get you invited to Christmas dinner. My luck's changing for the better every day. This movie has scenes where family are essential. This movie is about becoming part of a family. This movie has a giant, like, nine-member family. The house in this movie has more story development than most movies give characters. It also is set around Christmas. There's the feeling of holly jolliness, which is a very different flavor in L.A. But at the end of the movie, it's about someone that feels like an outsider being wel welcomed into a family during the holiday season while also being about cocaine dealing. And I love it very much. Earlier in the show, you thought I was going to strip this of its Christmas glory, didn't you? I did, and I was worried. I don't. It's so Christmassy. The opening so, is like sexy no, jazz it is. Christmas. It is. It's a, it's a story that is set during Christmas, but it's not like I'm trying so hard not to name names and throw things under the bus. But it's not something that's not just that like... It's this time of year, and then we're off and we're doing something else, and we never reference Christmas ever again. That's there there are moments in Many. this movie that remind you what time of year it is, but I think I get more enthusiastic about calling Lethal Weapon a Christmas movie because of what you just brought up. So much of the holiday season is about being with friends, family, and loved ones, and feeling part of a safe, supportive community, and that's what these characters in this movie need, so... This very much feels like a very successful action movie. I love the action of and it. And the comedy it, is genius. It the also, clips. it really does feel like a Christmas movie to Thank me. Thank you. It makes me happy. Like, yeah. So the original opening to the Riggs character was a very darker, different one. The Riggs character is obviously very dark. He's he's trying to get psycho pension, which is basically, you watch the movie. But there's a lot of darkness around this character. And originally the opening of the character was even darker. But the new opening, one of the first action scenes actually takes place in a Christmas tree shop. Like basically where you, like an outdoor where you go to buy your Christmas tree. And there's this crazy action set piece literally around Christmas trees. And then it just keeps getting into family, keeps getting into things. And that's what makes me think this is the much superior Christmas action movie. And because there's no one like Murtaugh. Roger Murtaugh mm. is one of the best characters in the history of cinema. I can't I can't do any comparing because you you know I'm not someone who revisits the diehards and the lethal weapons of the world and honestly I can't remember the last time I've rewatched this movie until yeah. you put it on the list and so I had good. to watch it for this I mean if I were to guess, maybe on TV as wow. a kid, it's been a very, very long time. And it's pretty, I mean, it, it feels very, a lot of things about it feels very 80s to me. Sure. But it still holds up and it plays quite well. And I think that, uh, 
I think that I was just expecting to jump in and get a more modern version of the buddy uh, the buddy cop comedy. Yeah, this like pseudo it brought it to popularity. This was one of the first ones that made it big. Like there were obviously buddy cop movies before him, but like this was foundational for the 80s. There's there's like way more more depth and darkness the to this than scene? I was expecting. Yeah. Um I mean just like everything that Riggs goes through. It's, you know, like there, there's definitely a charm between the banter of the two characters and there is an adventurous quality to it, but he's not like a really The scene dark after place. he jumps off, the, the, I think the gun in his mouth scene is one Oof. of the best acting sequences I've seen in movies. Like the scene where you actually feel the crazy. It was my Twitter bar forever. The actual crazy in his eyes, you're like, that man it, might do this. Yeah, there. I, I was just, I was very surprised with how heavy some of that material got. And I was also very impressed by how well woven that is throughout the yeah. entire film and also you know it leans into the payoff of it all very like they need each other it's a symbiosis they, I, I rig rigs needs Murtaugh like More. a lot yeah. but they both need each other throughout this movie but watching rigs find like a safe supported yeah. place is is a real heartening moment. And as you get older and rewatch it as someone who's watched it from 2 to now uh one of the things i found interesting is as i approach older uh, I think Murtaugh stays young through Riggs. And I didn't notice that when I was watching it younger because Well, they bring up his age a lot. quite a few but times. But you think about what he does from being like, I'm turning 50 sitting in a bathtub to actually going out and being involved again. He goes from, I want to retire yeah. to, like, I feel like Riggs keeps him young and Murtaugh keeps him grounded. And that's a beautiful dynamic. And it's also a really beautiful, like, brother dynamic. Like, there's a lot about male toxicity in our culture that this movie really addresses beautifully. They love each other in such a powerful way. And one of the things I love about this entire franchise is the supporting cast stays the same. I know you've only watched the first okay. one. Okay. Two, three, and four, all of those cops come back. So a guy that had one line in the first one will be a major plot point in the second one, and they keep everyone. So it feels like this growing family. Then you get Rene Russo. You get all of this growth of characters. The dogs become more important. You've got, like, the cat on the top of the fridge in this yes. movie becomes an entire thing in the third movie. The stickers change on the fridge depending on the events of the world happening. Like, the details in this movie are almost Marvel in their Easter eggs, and it's all about this universe. And between this and Mad Max... Mel's one of the only actors where if he got injured in a movie, it affects the next one. So injuries he sustains in this movie affect his performance in two and three. Like they reference knees and shoulders and like that's such a magical thing for an action movie to really do. Like these are human beings. You're you're making a very good case for me continuing with this. They're franchise. so good. Especially through Christmas. Because uh, I had seen the original Lethal Weapon as a kid, but I have not seen any of the other ones. You haven't ones? seen two, three, or four? No. Oh, the, your, your diplomatic immunity is about to be revoked. You're about I, to have an experience. I, I will I will <laughs> jump in. I will jump in. I will actually commit to watching. Four is the introduction of Jet Li to American audiences, and it's got Chris Tucker in it. Chris Rock in it. Chris Rock and Jet Li in the fourth one. You're All in right. for a whole time. All right. Yeah, it's a good I guess time. I, I guess I got something to do. Merry Christmas, everyone. Season. We're having yeah. Harry watch the greatest action <laughs> franchise of all time. I'll report back, I promise. Yes. So I'm so excited for you and for <laughs> me to hear it. I'm just selfishly so in, like, yeah. in glee. Well, this has been another episode of Collider Movie Club. As we mentioned earlier, this episode of Collider Movie Club is a paid promotion brought to you by Movies Anywhere. Movies Anywhere's new My List feature gives you more ways to organize and personalize your digital collection than ever. You can either create lists all on your own or let Movies Anywhere do the work for you with a unique algorithm that creates suggested lists based on your purchase and watching habits. So if you'd like to put the My List feature to use and possibly discover some great new movies in the process, simply download the free Movies Anywhere app, sync your collections from different digital retailers into one place, and start organizing your movies your way today. We'll see you real soon for another edition of Collider Movie Club. Thanks again. Happy holidays! Happy holidays!